Hey friends, thank you so much for allowing me to participate in your Lenten lunch journey. I'm so excited to be with you today. My name is Bill Baubach. I'm the lead pastor at Impact Christian Church, and I'm so grateful to be a part of your journey today. As we dive into Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus was being led by the Spirit to be tempted in the wilderness. This was just after Jesus was baptized, You know, which leads us into the realization that so often, after we have those spiritual highlight moments, is often the times when we can expect challenges or temptations or to be tested to come our way. You know, the devil is always coming to knock us off. God's always kind of testing us to help us go to the next, to the next step. And here, the Bible says in Matthew 4, 1, that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert place, into the wilderness, to be tempted by the devil. You know, that tempted can better be translated as tested. There's something bigger here that the Spirit of God was, was leading Jesus towards. Which we need to take a step back and realize the reality of the spiritual world and how it interacts with our daily lives. Because I believe that everything has a spiritual element to it. Everything is connected, which then also needs help, uh, requires us to understand the reality of the spiritual world and the differences between the different spirits, how there's the Spirit of God who's leading us, the Holy Spirit that He gives to us when we give our lives to Him to follow Him fully. There, there's the, the Spirit of this world you know, that is just overwhelming by the corruption and deception in this world. There's the Spirit of our flesh where our heart is always telling us where we should go or how we should feel or what should we do. And there's this, the evil spirits, the devil and his demons. And that's why in 1 John it says that we need to test the spirits. Because everything in our life, every experience, every encounter, every opportunity is a spiritual reality. There's something bigger going on in this moment, in this interaction, in this experience that we need to understand and recognize. That's why we need to always be mindful and test the spirits and understand. And when we follow God's spirit, the beauty is this. It is trusting in the sovereignty of God that whatever he's leading us towards, even in those difficult moments, there's always a greater purpose that's connected to a greater good. And that's the beauty behind it. And so many times I fear that we miss opportunities of what God wants to do in our life and through our life because we hold so tightly on what we know, what we can see, what we can feel we can rely on. And God's Spirit often leads us through these moments of being tested to experience His greater purpose and His greater good. It's trusting in the sovereignty of God. And his greater good is the goodness of God that's just coming down and overwhelming us. How, how there's, so, there's a bigger victory than I could ever see. A, a bigger victory that I can experience right now in my life. Greater opportunities that I never even knew existed because I was holding so tightly on what I feel I know or my own comfort or my own security rather than trusting him to lead me. And so it's the challenge that, like Jesus, we need to understand the spirits because we're all following and being led by some spirit, whether it's our flesh, whether it's the evil spirits, whether it's the spirit of this world, or whether it's God's spirit. And we need to take a step back and, and ask the tough questions, what spirit am I being followed? What, what spirit am I following? Test those spirits and allow God's spirit to lead you. Trust in his sovereignty that he is good. You know, when he led the, Jesus to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, the devil began to attack. In verse 2, it says, after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Jesus was at a physically low point. And we better believe that this devil always attacks when physically we are at our lowest point because the devil always Attacks, attacks by manipulating our mind. And when we're at our physically low points, our mind is weak. And when he can get to our mind, he gets to our heart. And those moments when we're weak, we're either hungry, we're alone, we're lonely, or we're tired. And you better believe that's the HALT acronym. 
What, you better ask, okay, if I'm hungry or I feel like I'm, uh, I'm, or I'm sorry, angry or I'm, or I'm lonely or I'm tired, if one of those things are kind of popping up in my heart, you better start to prepare yourself because there's a, an attack coming. And I need to know when those moments come, how am I going to prepare myself? You know how Jesus prepared himself? By always being engaged in the presence of the Father's words and guidance. Being in the presence of the Father himself by his words. And that's where we need to be in the presence of God, in his word. So that in those moments when we're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, when we are physically weak and the devil comes, we will have the ability to to move forward to have the full armor of God overwhelming us. So this devil came. As soon as Jesus was in that physically low point, verse 3, the tempter, the devil, came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil's first temptation after Jesus, towards Jesus, to attack Jesus in his physically low place, was to say, look, what are you chasing? What's motivating you? I can give you the passions of your heart. And as we apply this to our day and age today, friends, I think we need to ask ourselves, what are the passions I chase? Even more specifically, those things in my life, the resources or the stuff that I rely on to provide my comfort and security. Just saying, God, the devil told Jesus, hey, just turn those bread, the, those rocks to bread. You know, just, just make it what you need to provide what you feel you need to sustain life. The things you chase after to give you comfort and security in life that you'll be taken care of and fed and, and restored. And she says, no, 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 I'm not. And so you need to identify yourself, what is those things that I'm relying on for comfort and security rather than trusting in God's word that he will take care of me? Moving along to the next one in verses 5 through 7, it says, Then the devil took him to a holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. He said, If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up. In their hands, so that you will not strike against, so your your foot will not strike against a stone. And Jesus answered him, "It is not written, do not put the Lord your God to the test." You know what we see here: the second temptation of the devil was all centered around pride. And I feel so often in our lives, let's be real for a moment. We have a tendency to get a little selfish and full of ourselves. We try to build ourselves up and what we have and our stuff up and, and, and our livelihood up that we're, I don't need anything. I've got this and everybody come to my rescue. And we live so selfishly and prideful and so full of ourselves. And sometimes we put God to the test too. God, just give me what I want. Put me on the pedestal. And I think sometimes we need to break down that pride to experience the goodness of God. The last temptation that Jesus faced with the devil in verse 8, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and their splendor and all this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil came to Jesus and said, you know, this is kind of tough. You're in a low place right now. And and, and he starts to do that mind game. I think you could have more if you just kind of stepped away from what God's saying to do and chase all the stuff that you could have in this world. And I fear, friends, that sometimes we sell our devotion way too easily. We give up our devotion to God for the devotion of this world and what this world offers. And that's what Satan was challenging Jesus with. 
you know what you're about to walk through. You know it's not always going to be easy. You know what the end game is. Do you really want to go that path or you can have all this? Just say it. But we chase all this. We sell our devotion for stuff that never really lasts, for stuff that really doesn't answer the deep, darkest questions of our hearts. My friends, don't sell your devotion so easily to chase the world rather than chasing God. Don't give up on him because he hasn't given up on you. You know, after Jesus kind of faced the temptations and always challenged the temptations back with the word of God because he was prepared by the word, then all of a sudden the angels came in verse 11 and the devil and, and he just fled. You know, when light comes, darkness always flees, which highlights something so important. As the spirit leads us to the places where we are tested, we will be challenged. But when we rely on the sovereignty and the goodness of God, he will overwhelm us with his goodness in the fact of victory that he has for us. He will give us victory. And his victory is found in his presence. When the angels came, the very presence of the Spirit of God came, the spirit of the evil one fled. And in that presence, they had victory. My friends, whatever you're going through right now in your life, whether you're being tested or overwhelmed by just the brokenness that's around you in this world, trust in the goodness of God. Rely on Him. Allow His Spirit to lead you and experience the victory of His goodness in your life. Friends, I hope today that you feel blessed and encouraged and that you experience the full presence of God. God bless.